Okay, you know, familiar in curling photography, you have an appendage, cut off the finger, still shows a show, put it on a photographic motion in your hand, you still see that finger, it's a phantom, a ghosting image. Do you remember that? It's really in curling photography? Yeah, it's called curling photography. It's still there? The oh, you didn't know that? No, I didn't know it was still there. It's a trip. <laughs> How's that work? Um, it's so well known now. Oh. Um, <laughs> what Let me have the secret. What happened is, is your bioelectric field doesn't know it was cut off. Okay, so your bioelectric field, all everything else is still projecting the energy out and around it, and you can have a person missing a whole finger, put his hand on photographic emotion. And he's got all his fingers. Well, Charlie, you've seen that? Well, not only that, the people still feel there. Yeah, yeah. Their, grandfather their, felt their, his their finger limbs are still it. there, even when they've been amputated. And have yeah. the, the, the aura is still there. Mm -hmm. so the, uh, but still, that's subjective by them. In this case, I'm right. saying it's film emulsion, right. so we can but actually can see, see it. That. Right. You, and yeah, you've you seen it. You can also see it. Um, yeah, I've seen it in, in photographs. Exactly. That, uh, and There's someone here that does that. Really it was all done in Russia. Right. Some someone here that does that. Yeah, Pat Howard. Pat Howard does that. that. Yeah, she lives up on Olinda Road. Yeah. yeah. yeah she did that on me, actually. And, uh, Except you got all your fingers. Yeah, she did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she's, still, she, she's able to read those. Uh, yeah, she can tell purposes, you what's wrong with you. And, and she's you. pretty good at it, too. Yeah. And then she does color ones. She does black and white ones, and then she does the color ones. They're pretty, uh, pretty neat. So what about increasing the bioelectric frequency where the missing finger is being able to make a finger grow back? Is that We're getting to that. Yeah. Good question. Well, they can, they can do that at certain stages of, you know, children. If a child loses his or her finger, you know, from like about the first digit on, I heard, it will grow back. In fact, I have a board right there showing the finger. So you're right. Um, so, numbers themselves, by the very existence of a one, it creates an, a phantom of the eight. So there is not endless, as to the points we were reading, such as that, how many base systems are there? Okay. We say, it says, somewhere, um, it says, how many counting base systems are there? There's only one. Pretty hard core medicine to swallow. There's only one base counting system. Okay. Remind me, I want to go to polarity and I want to go to the vortex. Two things, please. Okay. Charlie? Um. I'm unclear as to how you're defining e each of those uh, numbers on um, on the corners there. It represents a, a group, a family of numbers, right? Like one rep the family rep number group, the first one of 147, represents totally different planes of spatial orientation or points. This one's at the top. They never have two family number groups occupying both tops. Only one. There's one's at the bottom. And the other ones at the middle, and they are as far triangulated away well, from that's one. That's a number group right there. You're, you're, I'm talking one, about what about one itself? Is that a number group by itself? No, it can't. Okay, be. so one four seven is the group you're referring to. Nothing's less than groups of threes. Okay, so and how is that made into uh, a number group again? Just review for me. How, how, how it's really made into a number group is that these emanations are shooting. And this is what you're asking, but this is the correct answer. There's three emanations shooting out at the same time. And if they're shooting out dimensionally, Charlie, one's going right here, one's going right here, and one's right here. And as these three are shooting out, three points ahead of them, okay, is the last one that went out okay. before them. So there's space, so space, three, next so emanation. Get, so they don't just shoot out, one, and then there's another the one, then another one. A group, you add three each time. That's Say it again. To get Everything's seven. controlled by three. Oh, so you mm. add three to one to get four, and then you add three more to get seven. Right. And then you add three more, and you get to one again. So those cycle, those are a group in themselves, right? Mm -hmm. with, with, with differences of three. I admire you, Charlie, for learning this, because your math is, you've learned so two, much. The fact you can five, deal with yeah, such easy, yeah. basic things okay. really is a big accomplishment, yeah. because okay. it's much harder for you than it is for normal people. Yeah. But by themselves, they're just part of a, of a group. That's right. Closed. 
but, the, the, but, 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 but the blues and the pinks are closed, closed groupings. Exactly. Yeah. Definitely yeah. closed. Yeah. Creation's a closed creation. That's why it's called a bounded infinity. It's and, an infinity and, and, of duration, not direction. The duration is the spin continuum. It's a never. It's infinity of motion, but it is not infinitely going out into space because it's warping and being curved by the intersections of these emanations it causes it to warp it's like a little kicker and it causes it to spin and as they spin ever hit a leaf on the lawn kicks up in the air and comes closer to you than where it began from instead of going away where you wanted it to okay that's what these things are doing they're being warped okay and there, this is relativity here again this is Einstein c squared and it has an axis it's a self-inclusive relativity it's so extremely relative that it's relative to its convergence point, which is right here. Everything has an axis, and this is a fixed constant. This is an absolute. The number nine represents truth, perfection, consciousness. It's called a fixed constant. There's two schools of thoughts in the world. There's one that there are not fixed constants, and the other one is that there are fixed constants. Mine is, is that there are fixed constants. These are called axioms, theorems. They're called divine virtues, spiritual principles. It can be applied just as fast. You can go from spiritual to physics and physics back to spiritual. It can be spiritual, it can be love, faith, um, trust. Uh, in physics, it can be um, the axis, the number nine. Why a gyroscope always stands up on its own when it spins. So by saying there's no fixed constants, basically sounds like uh, atheism or theism is exactly. like, there's constants like entropy there's no order in the universe versus homostasis everything has a divine order exactly right I'm glad you said it that was a good point Charlie you didn't ask your question though. yeah I it? did uh, I'm, I'm clear as to uh, what you were talking about now I'm, I'm just feeling some other things okay clarity okay um the number one, if it's positive, the number two is going to be negative, the number four is going to be positive, the number eight is going to be negative, the number seven is going to be positive, the number five is going to be negative, excuse me, and the number one is positive. So it's going back and forth, back and forth. Positive, negative. There's your binary flip-flop. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay. Um, Okay, polarity. Because there's only six numbers in our physical world of creation, one, two, four, eight, seven, five, okay, th which is a fact. Okay, in other words, in the third with matter, there's only six numbers to work with. Okay, you don't have to worry about there being an odd number like that. When they try and do a positive, negative, and positive, negative, and when you get to nine, you're at a positive, and then you go back to one, it's a negative. But you start with a positive, it doesn't work. Because there is not an odd system. The physical world of mass always has symmetry, always has parity, because it's an even amount. Six is an even amount of number. Things are always done in pairs. Okay. So thus, but it's complicated. This is where quantum comes in. First of all, the center of the circle, and I'm just teaching you guys how to be prepared to make this into the next chart, and there's another chart behind here. And there's many charts over here. Okay, so this is called the legend. This is God's schematic. It's the blueprint. Once you learn the math in this, then you start doing calculating and functions, and essentially you start calculating this stuff. I'll let you see where you're going to. Okay, you start going into this kind of stuff. Okay, so you start going into more advanced physics. It's called cosmology of the universe. Okay? So, so if you have a circle, this is the center. But what, look at this, the center is way off down here. Remember, this is explaining things, okay? The reason it's off is because there's more to it. Because if we had a positive one, we know we must also have a negative one, okay? So there's another one, not seen here, that's also negative. There's another two that's also positive that's totally reverse of all of this. So instead of 9, I now need 18 to represent this system. Does everyone follow me? For I, if I had, 
I have 6, 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, so I need another 6, which is 12, to represent 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5. I'm just saying this, I think it'll be lost, but... And that gives me 12, and there's nothing less than packets of 9. So if I still have 1 9, now I got 2 9s, okay, because, and there's uh, 6 and 6 is 12, okay. Where are my two other, where's my other group of 6 um, to make 18, okay? It happens to be this 3, 9, 6. I've said that in the physical world there's this duality, okay. In the higher world there is also a duality, but the duality is to try and make this third dimensional reality a mirror or a reflection of this greater world. Yet all the time while we're trying to be a hologram of this greater world, we're at the same time created by it. So we are essentially tied to it. We are bounded to binded with it. And we, have, we are actually signs or proofs of it, its existence. And what happens is, is that the higher linear emanation of nine becomes the third invisible force that does not allow anything else to be greater than it. Thus, we can mirror God, but we'll never be greater than God. So what happens when nine is a positive, three and six are both negative? Okay? Okay, it is the control. Three and six are the result. Now, in reality, just like I have two hands here, but it looks like one, I really have six here. I don't really have three of the three nine six. I really have six. Okay, and I'll show you how it works. We started with a negative three. Here's our binary, flip flop back and forth. We go negative, positive negative. Our next positive is not going to be 9. We already got a positive 9. Our next positive is going to be the invisible 6 that you can't see behind it, that it's laid over. And that's going to be your positive. Okay. There's an invisible 9 under there. That's going to be your negative. Okay. And there's an invisible 3 over here. And that's going to be your positive. Whenever you end on a number, it's in the, you always there's a second one hidden by it, you then give it the reverse polarity and go in the opposite direction. It's one of the principles of this math. Everyone follows me. Okay. So now you know there must be duplicate, there always must be a positive and negative to everything. We have that. It must, and that it's not based on the fact of a duality of the positive and negative, but it's based on a trinary where you're going to have a positive and two negatives or a negative and two positives. Just as we had the 1, 4, 7, right here we're seeing, because in the third dimension it's a little bit more complicated, for the family number groups, the 1 and the 4 and the 7 are all positive at the same time, and in the 2, 8, 5s, they're all positive, they're all negative at the same time. How this coil works is these windings are wound in such a way to create that, sit in under here, that one wire, there's two wires here, uh, that one wire, all of the positives are in one wire a minute at, at the first stage. There's three stages. It's a firing stage. The first activation sequence of this coil, only the right wire is all positive, and that's your 147. So the second a activation stage is all your left wire is all positive. It's activated. And now the first family number group, 147, the other wire is totally off. And then they're both off. None of them are positive. They're all neither positive. And the middle space in there becomes all positives, the 396. I'm just preparing you this. This is like advanced education. This is for what you're about to see, not what you've seen so far to relate it to.